Greetings and welcome guys, gals, and non-binary pals to episode 341 of the Words About Games podcast, the weekly gaming podcast for Words About Games. I am your host, Amy K. Alexander, and I'm joined this week by a sleepy Bulbasaur, a sleepy Charmander, a sleepy Among Us crewmate, and a sleepy Daffin Moody. I am a bit sleepy, yes, there's no doubt about it, but a long week, <laughs> a long week. <laughs> Oh my god. But how did he do he do, everybody? It's Friday. You know what that means. It's video game talk day. It's video game talk day. Got video games to talk about. We have video games to talk about. It's amazing. Who knew we would talk about video games on a video game podcast? On Friday. On Friday. Wild. Especially Friday. Perf it's perfect for you just to go into the weekend. People. Exactly. Exactly. It's a weekend podcast now. It's not a weekend. You can podcast. use us to fall asleep to because I'm boring, so I can probably just knock you out if I wanted Fuck to off, by my mate. voice. Shut up. <laughs> if you were no, well, I'm not I'm not that's bait. That's bait, and I'm not falling for it. You're not boring. Shut I was up. not baiting you. I don't you. know what you're talking about. I wasn't you. trying to bait you. I wasn't even calling you boring. I was calling myself boring. I'll fight you, really. That wasn't that Stop was... calling yourself boring. Or I'll punch oh, okay. you in the head. I'll figure out a way to do it. Okay, Doc, okay. I'll figure out those finger things Dr. Strange does and I'll make a portal and I'll just punch you in your fucking stupid non-boring head <laughs> Bonk. see his face <laughs> exactly <laughs> and then everyone watches is like wait she knows magic <laughs> yeah I'm a witch have I never told anyone I feel like I've mentioned this before <laughs> Dr. Strange is real Wait, so did Thanos actually attack him? Is going, what is real? <laughs> so why didn't Ant-Man go up his ass and blow, <laughs> blow him up? <laughs> is he that wants to go, real? He wants to run What's up a giant... On? He wants to run up a giant purple... Actually, no, there probably are people who would love to go up a giant yeah, yeah, purple. Yeah, yeah, I was say, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 let's not, yeah. Let's not pull on that thread. I don't I don't think we'd like what comes <laughs> down. How's it going, Randy? <laughs> Yeah, it's going all right. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's going all right. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's been a long week. It's been a long week. It's only Thursday. We've got another day to go before the weekend starts. You knew. You knew. Holy smacking hell. But no, I have a weekend I'm all right. this weekend. I have a weekend. Yay. I have a weekend that is actually a weekend. Yeah. That never happens. Normally everyone's like, oh, thank God it's Friday. And I'm like, Friday is meaningless to me. <laughs> <laughs> Friday is meaningless to me. <laughs> My Friday was on Tuesday, okay? <laughs> uh, mm. <sighs> but I'm glad you're okay. Apart from being tired, of course. Mm. It sucks when the car just decides to fucking break. Yeah. <laughs> Your car broke, you got trapped up north for, for even longer yeah. than you anticipated, <laughs> and yet you still didn't come and see me? I had no car. <laughs> Trains and buses exist, Moody, that's all I'm I saying. I needed money to pay for the car. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> just, I'm not, look, I just want you to know that I'm not taking it personally. Not at all. I'm good too. I'm life. good too. No, it really isn't. <laughs> You've been around me for the last few weeks, and you know that's definitely yeah, that's true. Point. Like, yeah, I, that is true. Had had a long side before I, we started. Had, had a longer side literally <laughs> five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be an interesting one. It's. I am ready for the weekend. I'm not gonna lie. To you. I'm ready for the weekend. I don't just, know what I'm and do. I'm just gonna curl into my bed. Okay. And I don't think I'll get out of it. That's fair. <laughs> Until the F1 starts. And then the F1 will get really boring really fast because one team will be leading or one person will be leading by like 20 seconds. And I'll just switch it off <laughs> and curl back to bed. <laughs> I did that sometime last year. Because I was gonna ask I that like, a few times last year. <laughs> what what do people normally do on weekends? Like if you're a normal person and you know. Thank God it's Friday, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like, what do you do on a yeah, Saturday yeah. and a Sunday? Like, what do people do? I, a lot of them go shopping, and I can tell you that for a fact. <laughs> but let's assume I don't have any money. What do people normally do? 
I'm not going to church. Even when they don't, even when they don't have money, they still go out partying, <laughs> getting drunk somehow. It's oh, like man. they somehow find a way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any. I don't. I don't drink. So okay, then um, I'm running out of weekend they, activities. Yeah, <laughs> they stay inside and play video games with their friends online. Ah, oh, man, that's what I was planning on doing anyway. All right then. <laughs> it's all good. Can you play a phasmophobia from your bed? On what day? <laughs> from your bed. It was a joke. Because you can oh, never I'll, be in bed. No, I'll find a way. <laughs> I've got a few mirrors. I'll reflect it off into my bedroom and I'll get a mouse. I'll get a wireless mouse and keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> reflect the wireless signal back through the wet mirrors. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> I, I can see if that it working. works for Bond. It worked for me. Uh, yes. He reflected the many things. Did, it yeah. worked for it worked for Arnold Schwarzenegger in Batman and Robin. So if he can do it, no, it worked for Batman for, to do it on on to Mr. Doctor Freeze. I got my way. I got. I got. I went backwards there, but either way, I got there in the end. Batman, 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 Batman might and Robin, come up later. most underrated <laughs> Batman out there. This is Bat just one yes. of the. Is it the bat nipple one? Okay. The, it's the Clooney. Ah, oh, wait. Is that the really, really terrible one? But it's infinitely watchable because it's really quotable. Chill yeah. out. That one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a terrible movie. Thank you, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's a terrible. It tells you everything when the villain is the title, lead title name at the beginning, yeah. not Batman, not George Clooney. It's a terrible it movie, but I love watching it. I love watching yeah. it. It's so yeah, bad. Yeah. It's like the 19, 1966 Batman movie. Pretty much. All yeah. the 1966 <laughs> Batman <laughs> series. <laughs> you know, I was telling you the weird things that me and Phil, like, quotes. Talk me, about. Me, to, like, yeah, send yeah. backwards and forwards to each other. One of them is from 1966 Batman, where he's Sweet. got the bomb. And he's like, some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Some days you cannot get rid of a bomb. <laughs> that is true. Sometimes you just need shark repellent. Sometimes you just need... <laughs> Shark Repellent, it's a hell of a utility belt. I can't What's believe Rocksteady we... never put that in the, in the games. I know. Not Terrible. even as a Easter egg. I know, right? Not even as <laughs> like, yeah. That? It's like a can that he finds and he's like, yeah, this, this is bullshit. You know, like, I don't know, something, anything. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Remember that time, hey, remember that time I tried to create a shark repellent? <laughs> <laughs> and I got my leg a bit off. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I was in hospital new, for two weeks. Grow a new leg. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, man. Missed the trick there. Definitely. <clears throat> we should make... They should make... Not, someone should make a, a, a Batman game based on the 1966 TV show. Oh, that would be fun. That would I'd play the shit out of that. Get a better reception than the latest uh, DC game. See, I was gonna go with I, I'd play, I'd be more likely to play that than Suicide Squad. <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we will. Sure we will. <laughs> I watched that state of play <laughs> after we finished the podcast last week. <laughs> I, I yeah, I, I watched it while we were recording. <laughs> Near the end. I'm glad you didn't. I'm, I yeah, I'm glad the Suicide Squad part wasn't wasn't part of when we were podcasting because that would have knocked you right out probably. But again, we'll talk about it later. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm a lot we today. have, we have. I'm not threatening you. <laughs> threatened to knock me out. I did threaten to knock you promise? out. I did threaten to knock you out. That's true. All right, I've only threatened you once today. Yeah, I've only threatened you once today. <laughs> oh, today. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wait, there was a Pokemon Direct? There was. Oh, no, I put it in. Okay. I put it in because I thought you had watched it. Wait. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know this happened. How? <laughs> oh, I know how. I know how this happened. It's because I've been avoiding our Discord for the last four weeks. <laughs> and I haven't been putting much in there. Um... <laughs> We'll get to it, but how did I miss it? We'll get this? to it. That's the the that's the that's the, the, the catchphrase of this week's podcast. We'll get to it later. <laughs> um Moody's got some reading to do, I guess. Um I don't really have any good stories from this week. Normally I come up come prepared with something for the intro where we just do the just chatting bit and it's like, you know, there's a story, there's something funny happened. Like I ripped a door handle off my door, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't do anything this week. Like nothing 
nothing weird or interesting happened. Mm. Normally, something weird happens to me. Mm. I, I lost like ten years as I shaved and cut my hair. Yeah, <laughs> you lost a lot of hair. <laughs> it's weird. I'm looking at myself right now. I'm thinking. What the fuck? <laughs> now, a funny thing, I can do a story. I can do a story. Oh. So basically, I shaved my beard off because my mother hates my beard. Yeah. She hates beards in general. Okay. Like when my dad used to grow one or just, just didn't shave in general. He never grew one, he just never shaved sometimes. He was just too lazy. My mom basically said, get that shit off your face. <laughs> and funny enough, he actually listened and went and got shaved every time. <laughs> it was I was thinking, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so that's how she controls him. <laughs> Basically, but no, yeah, it was uh it was funny, but no, yeah, I, so I shaved off um being happy like that. My mum was just like, Well, you still left that flipping mustache on, not that dirt underneath your nose. And I was like, oh, for God's sake. So I shaved that off while I was up there. <laughs> Wait, did you have a mustache at some point? I've had a mustache for like the last 10 years. I just never shaved it. You can just barely, you can barely see it, honestly. If you go back through the last episode, you, you can look and it literally is the most smallest thing ever. It's oh, pitiful. Man. It really I is. Just... It's like, it is pitiful. I'd love to see you with a mustache. Like... Just like a full on, like. I with Amy, I've been trying to grow one. To be like to go like down here to have a proper goatee beard and everything. Now nah, the beard wants to go this way, sure. and the mustache just doesn't want to grow. And <laughs> the mustache wants to go that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wants to go back, back inside. Back basically. In, like, no, oh, ah, it's like it's like me <laughs> whenever. It's like yeah, it's like me when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Then you put bugs over your face and just say, ah. <laughs> I do. You do, yeah, it's but true. No, yeah, yeah. So I saw the new little one, the new little one, my new nephew. Me and the Mrs. Saw ah, the new nephew. Nice. He is apparently very small for his age. Okay. He looked big when I saw him. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I was like, no, right. it's right. But no, he's uh, he's adorable. He's awesome. adorable. That's all babies. No, no, no. That's true. That's, no, that's not true for all, baby, all Wait, babies. Not, are not adorable. Neither of us, neither of us are parents here, Moody. You don't have to lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Babies are not adorable. No. Apart from the moody babies, like Jack, when he was a baby, he was adorable. Theo, when he was a baby, he was adorable. Uh, Lucas, a baby, he's adorable. Moody's oh, just know how nice. to give out uh, does good genes and put out adorable babies. And then when we get older, it changes. Then, <laughs> but yeah, well, you become even more adorable. Oh, 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 oh. You reacted too oh. soon, and you didn't hear what I said. <laughs> So that's but you on said you. well, and I just like whoa, yeah. damn! Which is coming with a punchline here. I did. <laughs> the punchline was you get even more adorable, but you chose not to oh, hear that. Oh bless you! Oh bless you! Oh. Right, as a disclaimer, Phil's kids are also <laughs> adorable. Putting that out there into the universe. I haven't met them. Sorry, Phil. In case he's listening, he's not. I'll find out if he is pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you listen to the episode last week? Uh, no, oh, no, no, yeah, just yeah. punches me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Says yeah>. laughing. <laughs> Why you hit me? I said nice things. Well, he's not here, is he? I can't do anything about that. <laughs> in fact, here's one for him. <laughs> Why you hit me? <laughs> Why you hit me again? <laughs> nah, his kids are cool. I like other people's kids. Like I don't, <laughs> I would never want one one of my own. I can barely take care of myself. I have three hundred and forty one episodes of proof that I can barely take care of myself. Um, of of all the podcasts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just thinking three hundred forty one. I'm. I missed is a few. Three, I have... Is she actually three hundred and forty one years old? Pod hey, episodes. She, she Not yet. Good for three hundred years old. I look good for the age that I am now. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since I started That's taking true. estrogen, I've aged backwards. <laughs> That's what. That's the fountain of youth. <laughs> if you want to find just take estrogen, people, you will grow. You will age backwards. Yeah. Fabulous. You'll grow some stuff too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I've already grown them. So I can't do anything about High that. Five. <laughs> <laughs> High five. <laughs> it wasn't intentional either. <laughs> I can't say the same. 
<laughs> that's where we differ <laughs> that's where we differ there's no doubt mine i would actually like to shrink if that's possible <laughs> uh, estrogen won't help you with that yeah. <laughs> um i don't know should we start i don't know should we start the podcast let's crack on with the gaming news because people don't want to hear us talk about estrogen Oh, maybe everybody wants to hear us talk about estrogen all the time, and we just well, never. T- it is the fountain of youth. It, it has been proven. Hey, it's some wonders for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Amy's three hundred and forty years old, and she looks like a twenty-nine year old. Apparently. Fabulous people. <laughs> there you go. Problem hey, solved. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. So Stay- how are you still poor? <laughs> <laughs> Estrogen costs a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> it was cheaper back that's, in the day, Moody. That's, that's a joke, but it's also not a joke. Um, and then the Tories took over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brexit! <laughs> He's fixed it, though. It's apparently fixed now. There's a green lane and there's a red lane. People who are colorblind for red and green, they're fucked. <laughs> Follow the green lane and it's like, wait, am I in Norway? What the fuck? Where, where the, f- <laughs> the fuck happened? It's green to that, and it is in England. <laughs> in the sky at night. That was a state of play last week, <clears throat> Manny. That you, you started, oh, apparently, yes. you started watching while we were recording the podcast. Yes, I did. I spoiled two release dates for you. You did. It's fine. And I went back and I watched it straight after the podcast. Not straight after the podcast. I had some food. I had a, I had a late lunch last Thursday. So I didn't eat before the podcast. This time I've eaten before the podcast, and it's like, you know, when you just get that little bit lethargic and a little bit sleepy after you eat food. Yep. I, I'm, I think I'm gonna stop eating before right before we start recording podcasts. <laughs> so, so, so there's a time limit here. One of us are gonna fall asleep before the episode. Go we'll, we'll finish this, huh? Oh, both. Let's of hope us. it's me, so you can at least press pause <laughs> or stop the episode at least. It would be funnier <laughs> if it wasn't, though, right? Because it would just turn into like a timestamp of Moody tries <clears> to wake <throat> Amy up, and I'm just like leaning against my microphone, just. <laughs> Moody decides to join her. <laughs> Why is this week's podcast Five seven hours, hours long, later. Amy? <laughs> <laughs> State of play. It was a tale of two halves. That's what they say in football, right? I feel like it was a tale of two halves. I feel like that was a half that was good. And I feel like that was a half that nearly put me in sleep. And I don't think anyone's going to have any surprises by which half was which for me personally. (laughs) Where would you like to start talking about the state of flags? Naturally, we don't need to talk about everything. We don't have to talk about everything. Well, let's talk about, like, obviously some of the games that we're obviously excited for. So, like, uh, I don't know how to say it. I don't think I'll say it. Chia. Tia? Chia. Just imagine the T is silent. Chia. Okay. So Chia. Okay. Um, we're excited for that game. Fucking We'd love to look so at that excited. game when we first saw it. I want to say a year ago, if not two years ago, was it? It might have been. I think it was a showcase game, right? And they didn't do one last yeah. year, so it must have been in 2021. Was it when they? No, it wasn't. No, that long it ago. was part of the one when they revealed Wolverine. Yeah, it was the one. So that in was last year. One. No, they didn't Wolverine was Wolverine. shown in 2021. Yeah. Oh fucking hell! So this game's—we've been waiting for this game for a while. They didn't do a. Um, they didn't do a. Um, I'm sure they didn't do a showcase last year. So I were yeah, we're yeah. super excited. It comes out literally in a couple of weeks, which is obviously exciting. It is. Uh, it's it a, is. Yeah. It's the next game. It's like Octopath Two, and then I'll just dovetail it straight into Cheer. Because I don't need to worry about Resident Evil 4 because I'm going to stream it, right? So, like, Cheer is just the game that I'm going to play while I'm not streaming. I'm so excited. Yeah, it (laughs) it looks beautiful. It looks adorable. It just looks right up my type of street right now. And, like, you just need that good vibe looking game. And this Mm -hmm. game just looks like it's a good vibe. And that's what we want. That's what, yeah, it does look like a good mixture. Because obviously, you're doing a giant, both of us at this moment in time are doing it well. <clears throat> like basically getting prepared if not already started two giant open world games and we're gonna need a heck of a palate cleanser after those oh, two God, games yeah. potentially so I'm already... especially as yours is longer than mine oh mine so... is so much longer I'm already 10 hours yeah mine's like 
I even like even twenty hours story I've been told is like only like twenty hours, so I'm just like, Oof, I could do that. I haven't even recruited all the characters yet, <laughs> and I'm ten hours in. <laughs> that was um, yeah, it's gonna be a long one. The, the the this looks cool though. It's coming straight into PS Plus as well. It's gonna be on the second tier, so the the game library, but not the old game library tier. So oh yeah. And I don't have to worry about where I'm getting it from, because <laughs> it's just it's just going to be available to download. I love that. that I keep forgetting I have to, that. I need to buy that. I need to buy that. It's pretty good. Like if you want to play <clears> like <throat> the, the like this is only what third game they've ever like day one released on on PS Plus Essential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stray uh, was extra, one of them, I extra like Stray was one, um, and. Like, if you want to play, like, games, like, essentially all the PlayStation classics of, like, PS4 era, it's a really good thing to have. And there's lo- there's loads of cool third parties on there as well. Um, like, they're adding a bunch more stuff. Like, Cheer is one. Unchart- the Uncharted games. Four and the one with Claudia Black. Okay, cool. You don't remember either. Excellent. Um, <laughs> she's in number two. She's in number three and four. Don't you Is know which one I'm in? Don't be a pen. The one with the chair and the other one. And it's oh, not. Yeah, it's yeah, not. I know what you mean. No, <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't remember what its name was. That's why I, I know which one you mean. That one. Lost Legacy. Lost Legacy. It's called now. It's whatever it's called. It's now called Lost Legacy on this podcast. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, they're adding Ghostwire Tokyo. They're adding Rainbow Six Extraction, which I forgot existed. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. lie. I think Ubisoft forgot existed I think as well. Ubisoft so. forget a lot of things exist. That's true. Like, yeah. like workers' rights. Um, Ooh. Sick burn. High five. What's a sick burn? High five. I'll give you a high five. <laughs> but yeah, cheer. Cheer <laughs> looks cool. And PS Plus is. Like, I wouldn't recommend the top tier, <clears throat> the one which. Unless you want game streaming. Um, I wouldn't recommend the top tier with the, with the classics library, because the classics library is just kind of shit at the minute. And like. Legend of Dragoon. Well, you remember we talked about it. I think we talked about it on the podcast, and I was like, Legend of Dragoon's good, though. And, like, they released it, and it's fucking broken as shit. <laughs> oh, no. And it's like, oh, well. <laughs> that's why they're holding back Dino Crisis. They know they can't release that shit as broken as shit, so that's why they're waiting. They're getting that fucker fixed, <laughs> and then they're going to remake it. Because they're, they're, they're obviously doing it. That's what I'm doing. I brought it back. You brought it back. back. We're getting a remake. So, again. so that lasted one. The remake's one. happening. You made your piece. <laughs> you made your piece with never getting him for one week, and then you're like, "No, I'm bringing it back." Yeah, yeah, bringing it back. PlayStation, they're doing me good. <laughs> Not Capcom. <laughs> no, PlayStation. <laughs> Clearly, they need someone to come to them to give them money to do the remake. So, because <laughs> fans screaming at them ain't enough. <laughs> Who's the Betsy fans? They'll scream and listen to it. Well, actually, you don't even listen to them either. They don't people have been to asking for, they were, they've been asking for a Code Veronica remake. You're not getting that fucker either. <laughs> Probably. <so>. Good. <laughs> Good. I don't want to live. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You've just played that, didn't you? I don't want to live through that again. And I played through it last year. Yeah. I still yeah, have the footage. Eventually, I'll get around to making that. But um, I know, right? They don't listen to the fans who don't want Code Veronica remakes either. Like the sensible Resident Evil fans who just want one, two, and three. Not like remade or, or anything fancy. Just, just I just want the first three games playable somewhere. <laughs> that would be nice. Unfortunately, be nice. we never get what we want from Capcom. <laughs> we never do. We never do. We never do. We never do. Unless it was, mo- unless it was Monster World. <laughs> I didn't know I wanted that though. <laughs> oh, that's true. That, yeah. That's true. Literally, yeah, never, get- never played a Monster Hunter game before that. Uh, you gotta think we're getting a new one soon. Like I mean, a um, world one. I mean, maybe we'll see. Well, I thought that, but then they brought out Rise on on the on the other consoles, and it was like, oh, I thought they didn't bring it out yeah, on the other consoles because they were making the things. And I just, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think it'll be a while. They're actually going to do something this year. That's for sure. So maybe. Yeah, they are. It's called Who Spider Man. <laughs> that's true. Like, yeah, they don't. That's all they need is Spider Man. That's what that they proved that two years ago when they released No Way Home. So it's like we just need that guy. Spider Man. We just made two billion dollars almost. Why did we release Mobius <laughs> twice? We just need Spider Man. Um, oh. Yeah. So that that was good. Uh, Goodbye Volcano High was revealed at the PlayStation Finally. Five showcase and now has back 
does have a release date. It's coming out June fifteenth. At, at long goddamn last. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's like it's the same as uh, Tishy. I think it's game. It's just going to be one of those just nice vibe games where we're just chilling, playing, and just having a good time with the characters. Enjoying the dialogue, the music, and just like it's kind of like what I was like uh, we we our FK last year was oh, yeah, so yeah, just yeah. good characters, good music, and it was just like a baller of a game by the end, and it was just like yeah, and I th- I feel that's what potentially could be for both those games in general, but obviously Goodbye Volker High is obviously mm-hmm. does seem like it's leaning towards the more musical part as well, but yeah, so, you're in a band, yeah, right? I like am, the character yeah. is in a band. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to this one. And it's dinosaurs. Who doesn't like dinosaurs? <laughs> yeah, right. Pa- apparently Capcom. <laughs> I didn't want to step on you. I knew you had something, and I was like, I don't want to step on you, jerk. Um, I, th- I, I, like, I thank the PlayStation for releasing this when I'm on holiday <clears throat> as well, so I can just literally... Well, I was going to say chill with it, but it's June 15th. Melt from the the ever increasing summer heat of climate change whilst playing a dinosaur game. And uh, not... yeah, your poise would have just got home by then. Because you're coming down here, so Yeah. It'd be fun. Be good. I am coming down. It'll be fun. I am coming down there. I better get the air cons out. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about buying one this year after last time. Um I'm like, it's a small room. I won't need a big air con. Um Baldur's Gate 3 has got a release date of August 31st. I didn't realize that game was still going. It's literally in early access. Is it? Yeah. Has it? Hasn't it heard nothing but bad things about it? Or am I thinking it didn't? No. Game? It probably can't. What What will have happened is right. It's the this is the early access roadmap, as as noticed by this video game industry observer, as said he said that one time, which is a game will come out in early access. A bunch of people will buy it and download it and play it, and then oops. It's in early access. <laughs> so it's not finished. It's a Jeez. bit buggy. It, and it's not very good. So naturally, everybody will say this is the worst thing ever. It's terrible. Not realizing that how early access works is they keep making <clears throat> the game as they go on. <laughs> I can't confirm early access people are stupid. It's nuts, right? An early access game just came out. And I was look, I was scrolling through the reviews for it, and like people were like literally complaining about it basically being an early access game. <laughs> it's like it's a fucking early access game, guys. <laughs> you know what you're getting when you put the money down. <laughs> Sorry, that that's just how it is. Um, but yeah, no, like it's Baldur's Gate three. So it was made by it's being made by the developers of the Divinity Original Sin games. Divinity Original Sin 2 is one of my favorite RPGs of the last 10 years, so. I'm kind of excited about them making a D&D game. <laughs> Could be I'm, interesting. I'm not playing it on PlayStation, though. <laughs> like, you want me to play a fucking CRPG with a controller? No. <laughs> I know I make a lot of jokes about PC gaming on this channel. <laughs> but it's objectively better to play those games with a mouse. <laughs> And I'm excited. I'm excited. It does have a review score on Open Critic already because it's been in early access and a couple of places reviewed it when it came out. Again, don't know why you would do that. review a game. Don't know why you would do that. It's early access. It doesn't make no sense. This game isn't very good. Six out of ten. Like, no shit. (laughs) No shit, Sherlock. I'm surprised you didn't review the fucking GTA leak. (laughs) Well, this game looks a bit bad. Three out of ten. GTA is really gone downhill. Like, fucking come on, man. But um, but yeah, no, it looks cool. Looks cool. Looks cool. <clears throat> Anything Street else? Street Fighter Six. Uh, yep. You the fight. game looks bonkers. You fight. The in visuals the street. look really good. <laughs> yeah. They look really good. Like they looked good on. I remember when the Street Fighter Five was revealed. I think, and I was thinking, damn, that looks good. And now I'm just like. Damn, this looks good. <laughs> like, seriously, I'm just like, wow, this looks beautiful. I don't know if I'll give it a go because I'm literally like, just stick and bash it to bash the buttons. Bash those buttons. <laughs> I don't know what I'm pressing. I would I go, how am I doing this? I don't know how am I doing this. Bashing yeah. all the buttons. You just did the ultimate super move. How did you do that? I don't know. 
I don't know. <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, yeah. not going to play it. It looks cool. And people who like fighting games are excited yeah. by it. And I'm yeah, just yeah. like, I respect that. And I love that for you. And, and I'm not going to play it. Not because I think it's going to be bad. Because I don't play. I don't play fighting yeah, games. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, I don't Blame think I'll probably... I don't know if I'll give it a go. Like, I'll see how I feel around the time. Like, like Street Fighter games don't really have, like, the thing, like, what, like, uh, Injustice had and, like, Mortal Kombat had a story. And all like that. I don't think I, Yeah, I like do Injustice. That. Yeah. The Injustice games they were the always fun. Even though they made no sense, it's just like I was thinking, wait, why well, I'm Superman, I should be just killing you right now. <laughs> Especially as I'm the bad guy. Just put my fist through your gut, just like he did with the Joker, and that's, then we're done. I was gonna say that's literally how the Injustice series started. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> through the, through that should have been his ultimate move by the end. <laughs> just <laughs> I read all the comics. Like they do actually like justify the whole like batman can fight superman harley quinn can fight one Woman thing it's just pills they take these pills and it makes them super tough and strong that's it oh so they okay yeah <laughs> that's it okay. it's a good comic series it's, it's a good comic apparently series. yeah i heard it's really good i did it i have heard that so um, that was great resident evil 4 remake i'm so excited I just am. Um, it's Resident Evil 4. It's Resident Evil. It's like it's like that Resident thing 4. I told you about Star Trek, where it's like, does Paramount Plus good or bad? I don't know. It's got Star Trek. Is Resident Evil 4 look good or bad? I don't know. It looks Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt about it. Like, I'm very intrigued to see how they're gonna how things are gonna be on this game. Um, I can't remember playing this game and loving it when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Like playing it all the time. Like, oh it yeah, was such a it was such a like an iconic game to grow up with and everything. And like, and it did in certain, I know a lot of people, Resident fans don't like this, it did rejuvenate the genre. It rejuvenated Resident Evil. Resident Evil, sadly, was on a bit of a downward trend for a lot of people. Like, people, as much as I even know, I know Amy doesn't like this Resident Evil, but like, as much as people like Code Veronica, it was a step down for the Resident Evil franchise when it comes to money making wise. And at the end of the day, when you're in the business. Gameplay. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. I'm just clearing my throat. <laughs> you have to clear your throat with me, I mean, you know that. Uh, with Resident Evil 4, like, they just they changed it up and it was a success. Now, did the success for 5 and four, 6 onwards go over that way? Yes. It's, they sold really well. <laughs> they sold incredibly well, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about it. It's one of those hard-to-swallow pills. You might not like 5 and 6, you might even be justified in not liking five and six, but holy shit, they sell a lot of copies. <laughs> yeah. Hell, what's not the like? Chris Redfield beats a boulder up. <laughs> I liked five. <laughs> I was just, when I was playing it, I was thinking, this is the stupidest thing ever. It's Japanese. It's fucking anime. The, That's it. The, <laughs> the boss fight where you have to fight Wesker the first time. What you have to you have to like get the thing chest the crystal out of Jill's chest. Oh yeah, it was so funny. It was like I fucking love that. Like I still remember it. Like I was shooting my pistol at, at Wesker, and he was doing the whoosh, whoosh, and he was dodging it and shit. And I was like, and I was playing it with Russ. He, literally, we were sat in the same on the couch, and I was like, he's dodging all the things. And Russ had a rocket launcher in his inventory, so we went, ah, fuck, I've got this. And then he pulled his rocket launcher out and he fired it. And Wesker, there's a cutscene where Wesker catches the rocket. Throws it yeah. away, and I was like, and we were like, <laughs> they, ah! <laughs> yeah, they all the respect to the developers because they literally probably thinking, we know people are going to have a rocket launcher by there. Let's put in a cheat cut cinematic to stop this, <laughs> and just make everyone go. What do I do? <laughs> oh shit! Because this is before you work out, you're not actually supposed to kill him. So we were just like, what the fuck do we do? We can't, we can't hit him. <laughs> we just fired a rocket at him. <laughs> What's interesting to me about the Resident Evil 4 remake trailer though, is that Lewis is in parts of the game that he was not in in Resident Evil 4 original. Because of what happens to him. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, no. A lot of people think he's the worst thing. <laughs> well, he's in the minecart. Yeah. Um, you know, like there's a thing of him and Leon in a minecart and I was like, well, the minecart part happened later. <clears throat> So how much have they changed and how much have they cut? Yeah, so... If they've cut anything. Hopefully they've changed a lot about his character. 
because I don't want yeah. to put up, I don't want to have to put up a Lewis for an entire game. <laughs> not 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 <laughs> Resident Evil Four original Lewis anyway. No, that's true. Uh, we'll see. It's out soon, so yeah. It looks like they've changed a bit though. There's mm-hmm. stuff in there where it's just like, oh, okay, respect. You're going for it. Like I'm sure yeah. in the trailer, wasn't there a part where Ashley was like about to kill Leon? Because she's got all the Las Plagas eyes going on and stuff. And she's like, all right, then. <laughs> if this replaces the stupid tile puzzle, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Fucking hated that, too. <laughs> Let's get on to the final one, Amy. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Oh, fuck me. How has this landed like a wet fart? Fuck me, right? I... Th- I... <sighs> Jesus Christ. I watched this like obviously like all the way through and stuff and it's just like oh they've made Avengers. <laughs> that was an interesting choice. <laughs> they made it worse. At least in Avengers when they give you the different characters like Hulk and Black Widow and Hawkeye and Iron Man and stuff like they at least didn't go ah you know what though let's give them all guns. <laughs> They all going off. What they were trying to say. I liked what they were saying in the <clears> thing because they were like saying they all played it different. Yet the gameplay made it look like no, they, they played don't. all exactly the same. And I was just like, "Oh, smash. Why does Why does Captain Boomerang <laughs> have a fucking gun <laughs> and not throw boomerangs? <laughs> why does King Shark have a gun? He's King Shark." Yeah, we've just seen the best version of him on the last Suicide Squad movie. <laughs> because it worked. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know what I don't know what's ha- I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened with this game. Basically they were creating this game when the quote unquote live service games thing yeah. was ex- quote unquote exploding. And most of the ones that we know of and everything like that have all died. Yes. Like, we just reported on a few that are getting switched off soon. And I think again, Avengers is fucking one of them. Avengers is one of them, yeah. It's like, it's just, like, so we've, obviously we've been talking about Suicide Squad Killer Justice like for a few couple of years now. As it's like from reveal to this, to that, to that. And I've always, I've always said, it interests me because I like the writing and the the, 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 the banter of between the characters in the trailers that we saw and like I watched the trailer for Suicide Squad Killer Justice League last week and I just went like it's gone that's that was my I'm interest out. my interest just did died in the in, yeah, in that yeah, 15 yeah. minutes I just went from I'm interested to play it for the for the, the the writing the writing is good to there's no way I'm gonna play this even if I got it <clears throat> and try to go I'll just do the story because because I like the 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 banter between the characters. I'll get five hours in and I'll get I'll get bored. It looks boring. <laughs> it looks boring as hell. And and I think also a thing that hurts it is that people don't want to play a multiplayer hero game, I don't think. I think they want to play I don't think well let me phrase that. Maybe it's not a not a live service game type version of it. I think they just mm-hmm. want to play single player stories of them, playing their favorite characters in single players type ways. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think a lot of people have like been cramming out, cramming out for. Or like, look at it. Oh, look at the success of like Spider Man, uh, the Spider Man game. That's the two Spider Man games that came out. Uh, like, it's kind of the same as like Star Wars as well. Like, the year said, oh, no one wants Star Wars single player games. It's one of the biggest best selling games they've had for a long, <laughs> long time. And they've got the sequel yeah. coming out. And in now a it's like, of months. we only make single player Star Wars games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, they went down, they went down a rabbit hole of this thing. They obviously thought they had a good idea. Obviously, it's, but n- it's just, no, it's not a no bad idea. This. It's not, it's not a bad idea, but it's, it's been, it's at least from the trailer, it's been executed on really badly. Like, D, like using superhero or in this case supervillain, I guess. So they're just like comic book characters, right? It's like they're all really distinct and unique, and, and you know what I mean. They all have like that's the point of superheroes and supervillains and stuff. And like they all just play exactly the same. They can all fly, and they can all sh- and they all shoot guns. <laughs> and you have to collect all of the color coded loot to 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 make them have, make the numbers go up, so they're slightly more powerful. Yeah. 
It's Destiny, Borderlands, and what comic books are all mixed into one. Like, they had the thing. Like, they were like, oh, we're going to show you some gameplay. Here's the Flash. And I was like, cool. They're going to fight the Flash. Because obviously you don't just fight the Flash. Like, it would have to be like a multi-stage encounter thing. And he's running around everywhere. And then it's cut to the gameplay. And they're shooting glowing weak spots on helicopters and tanks. And I was like, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> This is, is kind of like what you were doing in Arkham Knight with the tank. Like, why? With why? the bat tank. And then they get to the cutscene and it's like, aha, now we're going to face off with the Flash and then Wonder Woman like lassoes him and I'm just like, we're not going to fight him at all here. <laughs> I, like, the fact that they didn't show a fight against one of the Justice League worries me a great deal. Mm. <laughs> but also I wonder if it's that do people actually want to play the villains? So that's or an interesting quote unquote, thing. quote unquote anti-heroes type of thing. Because everyone's been... Obviously, we know there's a Wonder Woman game coming. We know that's coming. To my knowledge, it's going to be a single-player game. Yeah, I haven't yeah, heard it's an insomnia right game. It's got the guy. Everyone's been sure they probably all someone out there who has always wanted a Flash game. I know people have been scramming in for a Superman game, a Green Lantern game... You know, they've got all these great... Like, we've everyone has said, this is why everyone... It baffles everyone or baffles people how Warner Brothers always continue to fuck up doing a quote-unquote DC-verse type of thing and whatnot <laughs> um, with the amazing characters that they have. Like, everyone still says, DC have the arguably the best roster, even better than Marvel. And yet I somehow see. they fuck it up. <laughs> they never nail it properly to no, what they, they want to do it, you know? And so... And it's like the same thing now. It's just like you've got all of this talent, all of this talent, and you're just doing this. Like, I was bored with Batman after Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight, I didn't enjoy. So when the new the Gotham Knights thing came, game came out last year, I was just like, nope, 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 nope. And, and this one's the same thing. I won't be touching this game. Sorry to the developers and everything, but it just doesn't look fun. Oh yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't look like anything that I want to invest time in. Like to answer your your earlier question of, do people want to play the anti heroes, villains, whatever? Like yeah, sure. If they make a good game, I'll play it. I don't give a shit. Like which characters they use. Um, if they make a game that I'm interested in, I'll play it. But Suicide Squad Killer Justice League doesn't look like a game that I'd be interested in. And yeah, like yeah, I want to play it. Like I, I said years ago i don't know if i was talking to you or if i was talking to keith or someone else like like i want to see like rocksteady like make other games like there were references in arkham knight to like half a dozen other dc heroes and like it was the flash and green arrow and 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 stuff and i was like superman's pick, reference i'm pretty sure pick any one of those characters yeah. <laughs> and make a I cool game it. around around them right like i'd love yeah. to play a game but like i'd love to be the flash in a game that'd yeah. be that'd be sick that would be amazing yeah <laughs> but it's just like, like the reason they've made the ju the suicide squad and not the justice league is because they couldn't give the justice league guns i'm guessing <laughs> that just shows how lazy they are it's like un uninventive of creating a game for people and whatnot and that's just that's just poor that's just poor that's lazy like even. deadshot should have a gun that's his whole thing right yeah 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 you can give Harley Quinn a gun, I guess. But yeah, like, she goes between gun all yeah, the time and, and a bat. bat. So. But like, I mean, like imagine like you know they put King Shark in like this big beefy brawler. You know what I mean? You're thinking he's, he's gonna be the tank. He's gonna smash people up. It's gonna be awesome. And it's like now nah, you give him a gun too. The DLC yeah. characters like here's Poison Ivy, and you think about all the cool things you'd be able to do as Poison Ivy, and it'll be like here's she's got a shotgun. Great. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> <clears throat> woo 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 oh yeah and that's the shame about it like i'm sure there's people out there excited for this game but i'm sorry that it's probably going to be one of those live services that we will be talking about in about two years two to three years where they won't be getting any more support for it or heck even shutting the servers down for it and that just, just shows even more just how misguided and mismanaged some teams are out there are because it's just like you're throwing out all of, you, you, all of this time and work and effort that everyone's putting into these type of games and known and potentially there's a chance that they could get shut down two, three years later and a few of them, like what, what I stated earlier, 
have been shut down or I'm out to be shut down. It's just like all of that time, I feel for those teams and everything. Mm -hmm. And I feel for the players who are going to get invested in this yeah. game and going to love it and f respect. I've seen people talking about how much they really liked what they saw and respect. I'm not, I've not like, don't let me think, don't let, like, I'm not coming after you or anything. But like, yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel for them as well because they're going to get invested in a game. It's not going to, it's, it's not going to last. And it's not even a Suicide Squad kill justice league problem or a rock steady problem it's the life service bubble burst already <laughs> like it did i'm sorry like we have the we, we we went through the thing everybody made their life service games and now we have the ones that are sticking and like if you don't make something truly spectacular and attention grabbing <clears throat> it's not gonna last that's just the way it is at the moment and thing the thing about game development is the bubble burst, but it takes years to make a game. So there, there, are, there are teams out there that are still going to be making live service games because that was what was hot, and they're going to keep coming doing out. What, PlayStation are doing them, 10, 10 yeah. in the next three years. <laughs> Supposedly by twenty twenty six, they're going to have ten new ones out, and that's cool because it's, I'm sure they're going to be ten different live service games, and there'll be one in there. There'll be like one in there for everybody. Like, on most people, you know, like, people who like live service games will probably find a live service game for them. But then all of those people are probably just going to go back to playing Destiny. <laughs> right? That's the thing about it, that the F1's got the mainstay now. Yeah. Destiny's one of the mainstays. Um, like, obviously, like, Final Fantasy is a mainstay for a lot of people. World of, War World of Warcraft's still a mainstay for a lot of people. Dota. Like, F1's got those mainstays out yeah. there for a lot of people, and they just... They'll give you game a go, and then they'll drop it like a fart in a hurricane. Because it so, has to be better than the best of what's before. already there. Like, you can yeah. still release live service games. Valorant proved that. Like, it only came out a couple of years ago, right? And it's stuck. It's stuck around. Because it's a, it's a quality game that has a lot of people coming into play and sticking with it. But... Like, if your game isn't better than Destiny, the person who is playing Destiny is going to bounce out your game straight back to Destiny. If your game isn't better than Fortnite or Apex Legends, <clears throat> they're gonna then the player who dropped Apex Legends to come and play a game is just going to go right back. And it's the same with, like, Final Fantasy and, and World of Warcraft. And yeah. and I'm, I'm sorry, your game might be really good, but you're going up against incredible games. <laughs> And I know it's not a competition, you know, comparing games is always a ridiculous thing to do, but unfortunately, when people only have a limited amount of time to spend on, on games as a service, which requires so much time, like, mo mo like most players are just going to fall back on on the games that, that they enjoy playing. Even we do it. We, we make a podcast and we go, we make a point of going out and playing as like a lot of new games. But then we still fall back on Phasmophobia and Fall Guys. Because <laughs> those are the games that we like playing. And Sea exactly. of Thieves, for me. For me. Like, I've thought about playing Destiny and Final Fantasy and, and all sorts, and I just don't, because I already have... I already have Destiny at home, and it's it's Fall Guys. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's, I guess that's my two cents on on live service games. There's nothing saying you you can't bring one out. It's just <clears throat> unless you unless you do something really stand out and really grab people and keep them, you're already in trouble. And Suicide Squad did the opposite. I think it turned people away. Yeah, and that's what you don't want to know. That's what you don't want to hear. Like I can, I can only imagine what their uh, what their marketing team is probably thinking of now. That if they're even scrambling or anything, because they all would have seen they would have seen all of this. They would have got all that stuff, and it's going to be interesting to see what they do next if they're able to do anything to try and just try and turn it around and whatnot. But uh, going off the game's not far away, yeah. So that tells me they probably they won't be able to do anything different to change the game up. No, in you, time. you can't. You won't be able to massively change the game at this point. What's really a shame as well is Rocksteady came out in in two thousand and whatever it was with Arkham Asylum and like really led the way on like action combat 
You know, like yeah. the, the the combat system in Arkham Asylum was an inspiration for games that followed it. And now to see Rocksteady putting out a game that is just following a trend that hasn't really been all that popular for a few years now, it's a shame. You're, yeah. You know? You're spot on. And then it just again goes to management. I guess you're right. I guess. I, guess. I, I highly doubt that the, the development team would have agreed to do this. It would have been management coming to them saying, all right, this is what we're going to do. It's going to be a live service game, comic book one. Let's see what, what yeah. comic books do we have. Oh, what about Suicide Squad? Needs to, have, needs to have Fortnite shooting and Destiny's menu and <laughs> gear game system mechan- and gun, yeah, gun Borderlands guns and <laughs> yeah, a lot of bollocks. It must suck to be a Superman fan. Finally, getting this game set in Metropolis, and then it's like the ultimate insult to them, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're going to Metropolis. You're gonna get a game you're in Metropolis, Superman, but you're gonna kill. <laughs> you're gonna kill Superman by shooting him uh. with a shotgun. <laughs> Sure, that'll help. <laughs> hey, it's, that's all they've got, man. <laughs> God damn. Should we move on? Yeah, I have no idea about this Pokemon Direct. Well, we can skip it if you want. It's here for you. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it either. I had no idea about it. I guess there was going to be DLC for it. Because I knew, I knew it was the Pokemon like 25th or the anniversary this week, but I just didn't think that you did anything. Pokemon, yeah. You interrupted an Elden Ring live stream last year. <laughs> I was because, busy. Because it was Pokemon Day. This week. I was busy this week. Leave me alone. <laughs> Made me stop playing Elden Ring. If I can watch Pokemon. <laughs> yes. It was worth it. It was a good that was a good time. And it obviously worked out so well that Scarlet and Violet was my game of the year last game year. Well, yeah, it was so worth it. <laughs> so worth it. What the hell's so Pokemon Sleep? It. I've heard so many people going on about Pokemon Sleep for like ages and i don't know what no it idea. is but a lot of people are really no excited idea. about it so a what pokemon the hell is pokemon now? sleep no comment i'm not touching that uh, no i don't want cookies go away the internet just gets harder and harder to browse the pokemon website is what is a white background in gray text how the fuck am i supposed to read that <laughs> god damn it nintendo do you find yourself struggling to get energized in the morning? Has the same old bedtime routine grown tiresome? Now you can turn your sleep into entertainment with Pokemon Sleep. Playing this game is simple. Just place your smartphone by your pillow, then go to sleep. Just like that, waking up in the morning becomes something to look forward to. It's an interesting marketing copy. Your adventure takes place on a small island. Place your smartphone by your pillow. When you go to bed, record and measure your sleep. The longer you sleep, the higher your score in the morning, and the more Pokemon you'll see appear around Snorlax. Your nights of sleep will be classified as one of three, dozing, snoozing, or slumbering. <clears throat> and in the morning, po- Pokemon that sleep in similar ways will come gather around Snorlax. Okay. So you just... It's a thing you put on your phone. It's like a sleep tracker, but with Pokemon. Apparently. Apparently, yeah. I mean, it's an interesting idea. It's interesting if you like Pokemon, yes. I hope you have more reasons to look forward than getting up in the morning than checking Pokemon <laughs> on, yeah, on your phone. Unless a fucking Bulbasaur is literally at my bottom of my t- at the bottom of my bed when I wake up, then no, I won't be getting this fucker. <laughs> well, don't you have a Bulbasaur at the bottom of your bed? You've got enough around you. I have many, plenty, many Bulbasaurs, but I, I want to take him to work with me and play with him and do all and take him for walks. Walkies. Yeah. Well, tell you what, I'll download Pokemon Sleep. Okay. If it's free. If it's paid, I'm not doing it. But if it's free, I'll give it a go. I'll let you know how it is. You go for it, Aaron. I'll be the uh, guinea pig. Uh, <laughs> the only thing that I... The only, so I'm having a look. So the only thing that I'm surprised that they have not announced yet. So obviously we know, like, obviously last year, you your Master Duel dropped. And it's been a massive success for Konami and everything like that. And I'm very surprised that they that Pokemon haven't done that yet. Like they're doing the world championships, obviously that's that's fine, I think. But they haven't done an online game, uh, game like that, like in the version of like 
uh, Master Duel and the other ones that we've you and me have played before and what? Run Run Terror, Run Terror, Legends of Run Terror, Legends of Run Terror, and everything. Yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah, like I'm very surprised with that type of thing. I'd be surprised if they aren't looking into it because that's what that'll be massive. Like it's like it's like it's money left on the floor, guys. Like it's like the same thing where I keep saying, thinking, when are the old games coming to the from 3D the the Game Boy, the Game Boy, and Game Boy Advance thing that's just gone to uh, Nintendo Online. When are the po- old Pokemon games going there? Because I can guarantee you, I'm a mark. I'm buying those fuckers, and I know I am. <laughs> I don't like Nintendo Switch expansion pack. It doesn't have anything for me, and I never play my Switch Online. Hey, Moody, it's got one Pokemon game on it. Shut up and take my money! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the uh, cafe one. I lost all my money. <laughs> but begrudgingly. <laughs> There's a Netflix Amy, show. It's so addictive. <laughs> They're doing a Netflix show, though. Stop motion animation thing. Oh, are they? Yeah. It's called That's Pokemon Concierge. Interesting. I don't Netflix. I'm completely lost. <laughs> it's an animation. It's it's not Pokemon the cartoon with Ash Ketchum soon to be whoever is replacing him, but a different cartoon. Interesting. I haven't caught up to those episodes yet, so I'm gonna have to look at that. The dub version should be getting to the world finals soon. Oh, I'll have to look at that. <laughs> um my laptop automatically scrolled all the way to the top of the dock. Don't know why. Sweet. And that's we're done, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> Time to go to bed. No, that would be we're starting again. It would be if it goes to the bottom of the dock. I went in. <laughs> Didn't like that idea. No. There's an Elden Ring expansion. It got announced. It I w- did. I walk up to it. The, the, my favorite thing about it was I showed you the meme from Breaking Bad, right? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. So. Me, me and Zaki to El- to people who thought they finished Elden Ring a year ago. We're done when we when I say we're done. It's like I'm not gonna play it. Elden Ring was a great game. It was my number three game of the year when we did our little top ten game of the year podcast at the beginning of of, of January. I'm not playing an expansion for it. <laughs> not a chance. Oh yeah, because you lost your save. I, I mean, I lost my well. save. I lost my save. But like. I'm, it, it sent me back like 20, 30 hours or something. So I still have a decent level character. So I'm sure like I'll be able to access the DLC with that save file, but I'm not going to do it. I, man, that game was so long and there was so much in it. And I'm just like, it, it, I'm letting it rest. <laughs> I'm very happy for everybody who wants more Elden Ring. But there was too much Elden Ring for Amy to handle in the first place. <laughs> Amy's just going to play Bloodborne again instead. Dreams. And watch someone play this because I am interested in like the lore and I want to see all the boss fights and stuff. I just don't have I just don't have it in me right now to do that myself. <laughs> Wait, no. Although it does sound like it's going to be a while away because apparently, reportedly, so this isn't factual. Well, it might be, but you know what I mean. This this is a rumor. Take this it is from Jeff Grubb. It's not from Jeff Grubb. Take it, take it from a well, picture. You know it might be real then. <laughs> it might be real. <laughs> real than a Switch Pro. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, oh, like they they want to get Armored Core Six out first, and the rumor is that they're looking to get that out in September. So the next Armored Core might come out in September. Cool. Fires of Rubicon is that what it's called? I can't remember. <laughs> Again, it's got robots in it. That's what we know about it. Robots. I'm gonna fight robots in robot combat. I hope everybody enjoys their Elden Ring expansion. Shall we? Yes, shall we? Shall we? We shall. It's indie game of the week time. This is the thing we do every week where we talk about a cool looking upcoming indie game. Two weeks ago, I decided we were going to do, we were going to do it slightly differently where I played a demo of a game. And last week I didn't do that. But this week, I did do that. Play the demo. Moody's not even listening. He's reading. He's he's probably watching PlayStation State of Play again. 
Can't believe that's got delayed. Motherfuckers. I'm stopping. Oh. Mooney just went on fantasy critic. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, I did play a demo this week. I played it this afternoon. Um so we're on. We're doing it. It's the thing. The the game that is indie game of the week this week is called It's a Rap, which is a puzzle platformer, but also a puzzle game. It's really cool. So it's a platformer. You control a dude and they're making films. They're really cheesy, stereotypical films. Like the the one in the demo was basically Indiana Jones. And you know, like you do like the platforming and stuff, but because it's like it takes the form of making a film. So at the bottom half of the screen is like you know when you edit in a video and you've got the timeline. Yeah. Of all the different things. It's that at the bottom. And what you've got to do is you not just you don't just have to like do the thing that it says in the script, like jump over the jump over the platforms, grab the scroll, and then shoot off through the ceiling. It was one of the levels. But you actually have to line it up the the platforms and and the boulders and all the stuff so that it all happens so that you can then so you have to essentially have to create the level <laughs> in a way in which you into that you can accomplish the the goal of the level yeah and then yeah. actually accomplish the goal of the level <laughs> it's actually really cool it's um that, that does sound cool i do have sound look like i wasn't listening i was actually listening <laughs> don't worry if you went, if I thought you weren't listening, Moody, I would stop this podcast, and I know you'd start listening because you want to get out of here because you want to go to bed. I just stopped. I will just gone. I just stopped. <laughs> and I'll just left this. I will and just shut the door. I will turn this podcast around. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really fun. Like I play, I only play like four or five levels. <clears throat> um, but it is, it is cool. Like. There are some things that are locked, so like there'll be like boulders that fall, and you can't move them across the timeline. So you have to yeah. like nav you have to like move the other stuff around it, like platforms and, and and other things. But it's 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 interesting that it's essentially two. Each level is like two different things. You know, you have to solve the puzzle of how do how do you, how do, how do I make it possible to get through this level, but then you also have to then get through the level. <laughs> Yourself. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, that's kind of so. It's really interesting. That sounds really cool. Uh, it's coming in soon, according to uh, its Steam store page to PC via Steam. It's developed by Chadco Studios, published by AMC Games. <clears throat> I didn't include a link in the document. <clears throat> I apologize, Mooney, but there's a link in the description of wherever you're listening to this podcast, so you can go and wishlist it. Your time to shine. <laughs> Take us where you want to go. Away from away from this podcast. Yeah, get message received. So let's talk about Star Trek. <laughs> Star Trek it is. Cool. No. But if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna use the checklist you've got in front of you, that's cool too. Uh let's go with the word again. I did not I don't know much about what we're again I've been out of it this week. So let's go to the one that's gonna piss me off the most. EA fires over 200 Apex, or 200 Apex Legends QA testers. The checklist now, Moody, so I can check things out. I can see this. I can see that. I've been getting You've been better. some tinkering since we were last doing done this. Some, still haven't thought of a name for it, though. Done some tinkerings. <laughs> I'm just like avoiding it by doing other things. If I just keep doing, <laughs> if I just keep doing other useful things, <laughs> then. Well, good. EA fires over 200 Apex Legends QA testers. This is from Edmund Tran over at Games Hub. He writes, <clears throat> Over 200 quality assurance testers at EA Baton Rouge, which reportedly made up the entire QA team responsible for Apex Legends, were abruptly fired at the end of February. 2023. A report from Kotaku, which cites multiple sources from within the studio, detailed a sudden and shocking dismissal. Kotaku's report details how the QA staff at Eon ba e e Eon? E e Baton Rouge were invited to a mandatory Zoom meeting at 8am on the morning of the 28th of February, where they were informed of the layoffs by their contract firm, Magnet Global. GamesIndustry.biz reports that full-time supervisors on the team would receive 60 days worth of severance pay, though the wording in the Kotaku report suggests that may not apply to all contractors. 
A statement from EA suggests that the QA work undertaken by Baton Rouge would now be distributed to other studios around the world, likely to take advantage of more favourable arrangements for the company in a time of increasing economic obstacles. Pekutaku, as part of our ongoing uh, quote, as part of our ongoing global strategy, we are expanding the distribution of our Apex Legends testing team and ending testing execution that's been concentrated in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, impacting services provided by our third party provider. Our global team, inclusive of remote player testers across the US, enables us to increase the hours per week we're able to test and optimize the game and reflect a commitment to understand and better serve our growing community around the world. End quote. On EA's official website, the Baton Rouge studio is described as, quote, the capital of one of EA's largest developmental organizations, quality assurance, end quote. The studio reportedly remains operational even in the wake of these layoffs. The news of Baton Rouge comes shortly after EA shuttered its award-winning Apex Legends mobile game, while at the same time promoting major changes to the core Apex Legends game. I'm just going to let you go for it. Take a drink. Oh, for God's sakes, man. I hate these. I hate these stories. I fucking hate these stories. Um, for God's sakes, yeah, man. You've been quiet here. We've even been saying that. It's because it's been fucking nice not to talk about you in a nasty, in a bad way. Yeah, right. But for God's sakes, man, yeah, this is just disgusting. Like, even if they, even if these two hundred people were the ones who were working on Apex Legends mobile game does not mean you cannot find them something to do. I do not agree with this. You are a billion dollar franchise. You're a billion dollar flipping company who basically from one game alone, FIFA, could you could afford to pay pretty much all your teams a very good wage even pretty much for all the time and everything. And I hate this. Uh, I absolutely bloody despise this. I do not like this. QA testers are the most five, top five most important jobs in the industry. And it's also one of the most lowest paid in the industry. And one of the most underappreciated. And it's been more... And it's not only... Fuck what the... Fuck what the bloody... Uh, fans think and everything like that. Because I don't really give a flying hoot about the fans whatsoever for any game whatsoever. <laughs> for it, it's thinking these are people's lives. They're ruining people's lives. Just so they can also probably just up that little bit of money they can say they earned over whenever they do their quarterly thing soon, because that's probably coming. I'm guessing. It's the, end, when it comes to... it's the end of the financial year in like four weeks. So. <clears throat> yeah, so it's poised to help them. They say we had record profit while also sacking 200 people. Got to make that number go up and their livelihoods. It's not their fault that a mobile game didn't work. They did what you asked them to do, which is somehow make Apex Legends playable on a fucking mobile. Award-winning so mobile game as well. Yeah. And it's not their fault if people didn't gravitate to it. It's not their fault whatsoever. It does not mean just because they... Just because the game didn't resonate for people on mobile does not mean you have to sack 200 people and everything and along with the full-time supervisor of the team who will apparently receive 60 days of worth of severance even though apparently in the, the Kutaka report suggests that may not apply to all of them this, it's even worse it's just you're digging your own grave even more EA and I just absolute hate this fuck you EA this is disgusting I hope all of these people land on their feet and find jobs I wish I could literally say we ha my place has jobs for QAs right now sadly we do not or anything like that but we, if you can if you want to if you want to explore things out of QA and raise up something to go some and find some other different position check out my company's position my job uh, merge games hit them see if they have something going might be able to help you as an effort like Honestly, like this sucks, and I hope it's all land on your feet. Yeah, what he said. <clears throat> I have nothing to add. He said everything. <laughs> Fucking bullshit. I hate you. Don't know how I feel about layoffs <laughs> by companies that make profit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unnecessary. Yeah, they were completely unnecessary. It is disgusting. Like, they could just give him something else, for God's sakes. Like, it is. It's a shame he aren't going to be making any more games, new games, right? Yeah. 
They've got the new football game, soccer game coming out this year, which is not going to be Not FIFA. FIFA. <laughs> not, not imagine FIFA. if that's what it's called. Not FIFA. <laughs> not FIFA, yeah, FIFA. <laughs> it's, yeah, right. Not FIFA 2024. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it's not FIFA 2024. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to move? Uh, let's stick with QA. Union sues Zach Division. Wow. Going for going for the key going for the QA trifecta there's only two of them duo factor duo factor union sues activision claims it unlawfully fired two qa testers this is from ed nightingale over uh Uringema. he writes the communication workers of america cwa has filed charges against activision claiming it violated several workplace laws in relation to firing two qa testers this occurred following a decision to force employees back to office working, which was met by resistance by workers. The CWA has said that, quote, numerous workers protested the return to office plan, citing cost of living concerns and the impact it would have on their co-workers who might be forced out of their jobs, end quote. In response to the office working plans, two QA testers, quote, expressed their outrage using strong language in response management set up disciplinary meetings where both workers were fired, end quote. Charges have been filed specifically against Activision CEO Bobby Kotick and allege that the firings were made, quote, in response to the employee's engagement in protected, concerted and union activity, end quote. The CWA has argued that, quote, the use of outbursts and strong language in the context of concerted activity by employees was protected by the National Labor Relations Board, end quote. Although tr the Trump administration has, quote, systematically rolled back workers' rights, including modifying the standard for determining whether employees have been lawfully disciplined or discharged after making offensive statements, which ultimately limits free speech rights for employees, end quote. In addition, the CWA alleged Activision, quote, improperly denied a request to have a co-worker witness the disciplinary meeting, which preceded the termination of their employment. For too long, Activision has gotten away with treating its employees, especially QA testers, like disposable workhorses, firing two employees for joining with their co-workers to express concern around hasty return to office policies is retaliation point blank. When, forced, when faced with unfair treatment by unscrupulous employers like Activision, workers should have the right to express themselves. End quote. <clears throat> workers should have the right to express themselves. Hmm. Um, again, Activision coming in and starting a fight with QA testers, <laughs> or with employees in general. But oh, what the hell? But thankfully, as we know, Union, union started at Activision and it's going to continue at Activision. And this time they picked a fight. That I don't think they'll be able to fight against because, like I say, one of the things, like they said, um, of like sacking a person without having a person present for it, pretty sure that's against the law and everything like that for that type of thing. So it's like it's just disgusting. It just shows one of those terrible things that are happening in the in America or just in the games, games in, in, general. in general, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and whatnot. And it just sucks. I hate to see these things, and I hope, um, the two people get the either their jobs back or the compensating that they duly deserve and hopefully find somewhere else to that will hopefully <clears throat> uh like them as to do their jobs <laughs> you know hire them to do the jobs that they want to do and as qa testing is to test the game so it's fixed and working for people for when it releases or in general <clears throat> live services am i right but yeah no the um Activision Blizzard just being <clears throat> just being Activision Blizzard they're Activision Blizzarding all over the place we didn't yeah. talk about them for ages and now they're starting to come back on a weekly basis and I'm not a fan <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't, it is kind of is. <laughs> don't yeah, make me no. break out the rants Bobby <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've been down that's this true. road before <laughs> that's true okay let's go to the thing that pisses me off even, uh, again Telltale Delay is the wolf among us too. Even though I like why they're doing it. <laughs> so I put I put this in here because it's actually a good story. <laughs> uh, Telltale Games know. delays the wolf of <laughs> wolf among us too to avoid crunch and burnout. This is from Justin Carter of a game developer who writes. 
Telltale Games confirmed The Wolf Among Us 2, originally meant to release sometime this year, has now been pushed back to 2024. Speaking to IGN, CEO James Ottilly, sorry if I got that wrong, was quite candid in explaining that he wanted to ensure the team didn't burn themselves out on getting the game out the door. While it wasn't the only reason for the game's delay, it played a huge factor, and he also didn't want the studio to have to crunch. Crunch was an alleged contributor to the end of the original Telltale, and Ottilly flat out said it's something he wants to avoid with this new studio. Quote, You can't plan a business around it. Part of it is about maintaining a healthy work culture. We don't want to burn out our good people. End quote. Both crunch and burnout remain important topics of discussion in the industry, and he went further by saying the games industry needs to be better about addressing both. Quote, If we're going to continue to grow, we have to stop it. We just have to stop doing it and make better choices. End quote. Here, here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Like, it sucks, there's no doubt about it, because I was looking forward to this game, and I just had to delete it off my fucking fantasy critic game. You think it sucks for you? Thing. think it sucks for you? So... It's got to fantasy credit time, and then we'll get into the thing. So you're like, oh, I have to drop it. Oh, no. Mate, when the fucking bids reset at the weekend, I, I, that, I put the bid in to counter to counterpick the damn thing, <laughs> and I can't <laughs> because it was too late. <laughs> I've been meaning to do it. The, the, what, what annoys me is I've been meaning to do it for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally shouldn't got around. To, shouldn't have stayed off Discord. Or, or, or I finally, I finally got a fucking round to it, and then it's like got delayed. So I'm like, great. So the bid's not going to go through. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Boo. But anyway, <laughs> no, but no, yeah. It's like this is great. Obviously, we don't want to hear the team uh, cr- crunching and everything like that. That's like what's what everyone's the industry should be clamoring, clamoring towards and everything. And like how I, it was one of the main things that absolutely crippled Telltale last year. Not, not when last the time. original Telltale collapsed a few years ago. It wasn't just obviously the mismanagement and not being able to get investment and everything. It was the crunch culture that they had there. They absolutely burnt the staff into the ground mm-hmm. to try and spit out all these games as fast as they could. And they never did it. They never spat them out fast. That's the thing about it. They <laughs> couldn't. So there's an <laughs> awesome, there's the an thing. awesome documentary on uh, no clip. Uh, about telltale games like in the yeah, aftermath and like it's like they couldn't the walking dead was huge it was huge for them yeah and, yeah. and they never did it again like because you can't the 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 episodic gaming model eventually just started waning and people didn't want to buy games and then like wait months between episode releases and and the games just weren't popular enough <laughs> but they kept yeah, trying exactly. to like they, they they kept trying to go like they were so yeah. they had to keep releasing more games, which meant burning it, which meant crunching and constantly, just constantly overworking the staff. And then the staff burned out. And it, I'm glad something good came out of it because it seems like the lesson was learned. I hope so. I do hope so. And like, hopefully, when we are playing Wolf Among Us 2. Next year, we'll be both of us saying, this is in our top 10 games of the year, guys. Go out and play this in everything at the end of 2024. And that's what I'll hope to, hopefully look forward to in everything. And I'll happily pick it on Fantasy Critic t- next year, so it's all right. Not if I get there first. It's true, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although, technically, no, well I'm... done to the CEO. It's always good to hear. It's rare when you see a CEO doing the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> Very rare. It's like seeing a unicorn. Um, that's true yeah but it, it, yeah it is good like I, I hope I hope to see more of this like going forward like stories of studios avoiding overwork and crunch and burning their staff out instead of always having to talk about how studios suck <laughs> like Activision Blizzard <laughs> but uh, this is good this is unequivocally good and the game will be better for it you know Wolf Among Us 2 will be a better game launching in 2024 than it than it would have been launching in 2023. Yes, exactly. And that's what we want. Uh, humble. Humble. I am humble. Thank you. Oh, you mean the story. Let's see what I did there. Good. I saw. 
Humble's know. Turkey and Syria Earthquake Bundle offers Gotham Knights and 68 other games for $30. This is from Chris Scullion over at VGC, who writes, The latest Humble Bundle offers nearly 70 games, including Gotham Knights, for $30 slash £25. The Turkey Syria Earthquake Relief Bundle has been launched to support relief efforts for last month's devastating earthquake in southern Turkey and northern Syria, in which more than 50,000 people died and thousands are still missing. The majority of Humble Bundles only allow the user to donate a portion of their purchase to charity. By default, this can be as low as 5%, with the rest going to the game publishers and Humble itself. For this bundle, however, the full 100% of the purchase price will go directly to Save the Children, International Medical Corps, and Direct Relief to help fund quake relief efforts. The most noticeable game included in the the most notable game included in the bundle is Gotham Knights, which is currently selling for sixty dollars slash fifty pounds on Steam. Meaning anyone buying the bundle for that game alone will be getting it for half price. The bundle includes a further sixty eight games, however, including Ghost Runner, Pathfinder, Kingmaker, Enhanced Plus Edition, XCOM Two, Euro Truck Simulator Two, System Shock One and Two, Worms Rumble, and Guilty Gear X Two Reload. A number of the titles included are indie games developed in Turkey. Oh, it's always nice to hear this type of thing and everything like that. Game developers and uh, companies coming together to help raise money to uh, for causes and everything. And this is a cause that desperately needs help. And out there, fifty thousand mm-hmm. people have died sadly, and thousands of are still missing, and thousands are, have lost their homes for who lost are of this and everything. And it is it is devastating that this is happening right now. And uh, hopefully. They'll be able to get a, a heck of a, a heck of amount that will go to these amazing charities to hopefully help them. I believe they've raised over five hundred thousand pounds so far. I was, I was I was actually looking at the bundle before um, putting the notes, <clears throat> throwing notes together. Uh, oh, fun fantastic. fun fact about humble bundles: if you buy them the bundles and you have you already own some of the games uh, in the bundles, you can just give the keys to other people. Oh, that's amazing! Fun fact. Thought I'd throw out a little PSA there because <laughs> I I was looking at the list. It's like I own most of these games already, but I'm gonna buy. Like if the bundle's still up when I have the means to pay for it, I'll buy it. Some people I know might be getting some Easter presents, <laughs> early Easter presents. Here's some games, but uh, this is great. Yeah, I always love to see games used for good. You know, we just had uh, Games Blast for special effect uh, over the weekend, and I watched some of my friends streaming for raising money for special effect. And, like, you know, we've got this bundle to raise money for Turkey and, and Syria. It's just uncomplicated and, it very and nice. I wish it didn't have to be necessary, but go buy the bundle. Go buy the bundle, people. Go buy the bundle. Boom. Uh. Go uh, Dice Awards. Dice Awards. Where are going to? I wish I went to the Dice Awards. That would be cool. What's happened to the thing? You've got Humble Turkey thingy mixed in with Elden Ring thing. What the hell's happened there? What do you mean? I don't know. Look at like Elden... I know. <laughs> I don't know what's happened there. No. I don't know. No, I'm just going to keep doing the podcast. <laughs> Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok sweep the board at the 2023 DICE Awards. This is from Marie D'Alessandri over at GamesIndustry.biz. Here writes, the 26th DICE Awards took place this week, with Elden Ring winning the coveted Game of the Year prize. From Software's title also took home awards for technical achievement, achievement in game design, achievement in game direction, as well as RPG of the year. But it's Sony Santa Monica's God of War Ragnarok that won the most awards, with seven prizes, including achievements in animation, art direction, original music composition, audio design, and story. It also took home the Adventure Game of the Year award, as well as outstanding achievement in character for its protagonist Kratos. Over on the indie side, Vampire Survivors won the Action Game of the Year award, and Dwarf Fortress was awarded with Strategy slash Simulation Game of the Year, but it's Tunic that took home the Outstanding Achievement for an Independent Game Award. Elden Ring and God of War. Who would have thunk it, Moody? Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? Like, like, uh, all games here, outstanding achievements and what they've done technically. 
for all the games and everything and like congratulations to all of them for all the awards that you've won and everything like that i can't argue against like golden ring winning game of the year it was highly rated and objectively an amazing game see and everything so i cannot say oh for god's sake elden ring again. oh man oh, fucking elden thing, ring you know? again <laughs> you know it's like yeah yeah game when a good friend of mine says she had an amazing time with it i can't say well Amy, you're oh, me <laughs> oh are you talking about me i did have an amazing time with it yeah yeah you know, i mean i had an amazing like... time with god of war ragnarok as well yeah as well yeah. And vampire survivors and tunic. <laughs> yeah, tunic. I played Dwarf game. Fortress. You were slow. I, I was the I was first on tunic compared to you. You were. That's just a very surprise though. That's I'm just like you're the indie girl. <laughs> I am. But do, you did have a reason why you didn't play tunic straight away. I know you could. I did you, play you it. I didn't get into it. I came off Elden Ring in tunic, and I was like, nope, not ready for this. Yeah. And then I played tunic at last. At the, at the end. At the, at the Might year, have been the you? last game that I played. Um, uh, and it was amazing. It was amazing. I still don't like the combat all that much, but like the puzzle solving and the whole m- manual and finding the finding the puzzles within the puzzles within the game, fucking Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> blew my mind. I was, was so good. Like I'm so glad it won like an outstanding achievement award. Um, uh, yeah, like I can't even really like I look at it all like like they won like most like god of war and elden ring were most of the nominations at the dice awards and i'm like i can't even really argue with that like they were the two like the two games that would just stand out you know what i mean for 2020 yeah there's no doubt about it yeah subjectively we may have higher games than them or nothing sure. like that but like objective wise just for a technical achievement what they did that they're like they are the head and shoulders above everyone else for the most part and it's like it's an amazing achievement that both games went toe to toe basically with each other all throughout all of this year and like the dice awards are one of the best awards out there if you're wanting to have a prop to have a proper conversation about if awards are worth it or something like that watch the dice awards for me personally because the dice awards at least aren't fan or aren't fan voted on because i hate that <laughs> They're not hosted by a man who cares about money and hype and nothing else. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're and not just ego. trailers. It's an award show with awards. Like, if you if your main complaint about the Game Awards is it's an award show where the awards don't matter unless Chris Judge is on stage for 25 minutes accepting an award, which was amazing. Um... Like and it's all trailers. Just watch the Dice Awards. He's still it's... going now. Didn't you know this? <laughs> I, I thought he was still accepting his Dice Award. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> he just continued. They just they just picked him up while he was still talking. Still and talking. Just put him in there. <laughs> same. But no, uh, same, uh, yeah, the... same. Same clothes and everything. The Dice Awards. The reason I like enjoy watching the Dice Awards is because it's about the awards, which means it's about the games winning the awards and the people accepting the awards, and that's cool. I like yeah. that a lot. And that's the thing about it. What, what, where, like the game awards differ? They don't give a fuck about the people who have made the games. Personally, they don't. No, you got to get those. You got to get those trailers and those world premieres. We've got forty world premieres happening yeah. in the pre-show see, see, alone. <laughs> yeah, the dice awards are the are the better thing to watch. I one hundred percent agree. They also gave out a game of the year award to Untitled Goose Game. I Again, remember that. I remember them doing that. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, 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 yeah. They won. Yeah, they won. That was like a lot of people were shocked Wrong. by that. How is a great game? I man. never played the game. I cannot comment on that. But it was a phenomenon. Like people it's were just like, game. "What is this game? Wait, is that actually the game? The uh-huh. Untitled Goose Game? Did they just forget to make a name? <laughs> it's such a good game. Um, I'm looking forward to. I want to stream it because I never finished it. And, um, back in the day, so maybe I there's stream time it. in June that you might be able to. Do, you might do that. <laughs> what we do it together. I own it on Epic, <laughs> so <laughs> I already own it. Cool. Uh, uh, go Final Fantasy. I was wondering when we were going to get at this one. <laughs> Which one? Final Fantasy. Okay. Fi- I just. I'm getting annoyed. 
I'm getting annoyed with Final Fantasy 16 and its producer. Final Fantasy 16 demonstrates that sometimes an accessibility menu is better. This is from Jeffrey Bunting over at Eurogamer. He writes, Final Fantasy 16 will include a level of accessibility in the form of equipable rings that alter the fundamental gameplay experience. Square Enix has revealed five of these rings that were expected to fit into three slots. One that slows incoming attacks, another which removes the need to give commands to ancillary characters, another that ties combos to a single button, and one each for automated dodges, because every game has to have a dodge roll now, apparently, and healing. If those sound like typical accessibility features, that's because they are. Square Enix's intentions behind this system aren't immediately clear. As reported by Game Informer Naoki Yoshida, the game's producer suggests the rings about making are about making quote something that felt accessible, but also customizable, so that each player could create something that felt like a difficulty level that matched them. Going on to suggest Square Enix had listened to players that are maybe not as good at doing combos and attacking. This is spoken through a translator. Some players maybe are not as good at dodging as other players. End quote. That is the target audience for the rings, as opposed to being considerations specifically for disabled players. Regardless, the changes these rings implement are the exact features many disabled players need. Intended or not, this has already become an accessibility issue, and it is an issue. By getting accessibility behind equipable items, the game fundamentally punishes players for asking for help on gameplay that developers appear to understand, to understand will be inaccessible for many. The intention may well be for the rings to be unequipped as one gets used to the combat, but as should be very clear by now, developer intent means very little when it comes to accessibility. For those of us who need these features and so must keep the rings equipped throughout the experience, they're being asked to give up other items that may benefit gameplay. Not least, as five rings need to fit into three slots, only three accessibility features can be accessed at any time. There's some other stuff, but I'm just going to stop reading the news story there. Um, yeah, so this this stemmed out of the preview. Uh, the preview embargo dropped. A bunch of people got to talk about how cool Final Fantasy 16 is, and it does sound really cool. But the one thing that immediately jumped out <coughs> for me and for some other people, was how they're approaching accessibility, which is rings that you equip on your character, which isn't necessarily altogether a terrible idea. Like, it's not a good idea, but it's not the worst idea I've ever heard. Um, the fact that there are five, and potentially more, I don't know whether this is that there are, are going to be more of these accessibility rings, these are just the five that they showed off, or whether these are the five that are the accessibility features, and there are three slots, means you can't turn on all the accessibility features at once and you can't access them from a menu, you're going to have to go and find the rings in the game. <clears throat> oh, joy. Yeah. <laughs> An accessibility collector's item. Yeah, basically. Why don't they just put it behind the loot box instead? It'll be fucking cheaper for them. Well, no, it's Square Enix, so uh, they actually what they would probably do is they would tie it to an NFT. Yeah, I was going to say, make it as an NFT instead. Um... <laughs> of course this is stupid this is idiotic square enix like like they've been the idiots since 2022 One. since january 2022 they have yeah. been the dumbest company out there some players and... play games for fun <laughs> <clears throat> i'm never not gonna laugh and... about that <laughs> <laughs> and uh and it just continues just to be a blemishment as always like they have been for the last since, yeah, since last year yeah um, accessibility is not a fucking item. It's not a fucking collectible. It is a disability. Accessibility is to help disabled people who have disabilities to be able to play your fucking goddamn game. For the for you to hide it behind something, just so you get to make it difficult for them to play it, just to hopefully pray to God that they find the one that they need. It's an absolute insult, twenty uh, Final Fantasy sixteen, and you should be ashamed of yourself. And that's the best. Of, that's yeah. That's all I've got for this. It's just like you should be ashamed of yourself. Well, it's... You're making it accessibility is an important thing that should be in every single game, and I do mean that every single game. You whiny little gamers, um, out there. So yeah, gamers. <laughs> Sorry, I want to. I want to. That's good. We should use that more often. Um, yeah, it's like, 
this thought this thought gone into it. Like they've thought, hey, we should put some accessibility like options in the game, but it's not even like it feels like they haven't even approached it from an accessibility standpoint. It feels like they've they approached haven't. it exclusively from a difficulty standpoint, right? Where it's like, well, you can make everything slower if you find the game harder, or you can like have single button combos because now the combat is like God of War, apparently. Um, and that, you know, if you want, but you really shouldn't. It seems to be the message that this gives us, whether that's the intent of the developer or the pub or the producer or not, that's the message that it gives out, right? It's like, you know, you can have this if you want, but you shouldn't have this because you should play the game the way that we intend you to play it. And that's not how things work, right? <laughs> like that would be like that would be like saying, no, you can't have subtitles on this new Netflix show because you should you, you we intend for you to hear the dialogue. Well that's great, but I can't hear anything. So you, you know what I mean? Like I need these accessibility options. I mean, sorry, I'm, I'm saying I, I'm not meaning me. I'm sorry, I'm taking, like, someone needs these accessibility options to be able to access the game. They should just be able to turn them on in a menu. Like, we've made such great progress as, like, for accessibility with some truly fantastic accessibility options in some games. And Final Fantasy 16 does something different. And sometimes it's good to do things differently. And sometimes it's not a good idea to do things differently. And this is definitely one of those times where maybe we should just do the thing. Put it in the menu. You've already put the settings in the game. Get rid of the rings. Delete them. <laughs> or, like, hide them in the world if deleting them will break the entire game. I know game dev is very complicated. But put, put them in the menu. Toggle. Make them toggleable. Make them... Make... Fucking... Boot the fucking Last of Us Part 1 up. Go to the accessibility menu and just do that. I forgot, Six, they put in accessibility options for the Final Fantasy IX port, the Final Fantasy VIII port, the Final Fantasy VII port, and everything for people to be able to use them to, like, knock yourself up to 9,000 attack, 9,999 attack, to have maximum levels, to have maximum MP and everything. For, for for them so they've they've done accessibility before where it's just helped people to be able to in the, enjoy the experience into however they want to enjoy it you know so they've done it before and they've done it in a good way because that way it's just it's simple you just press the button what they have in that they have set up for it and i think it would it be simple if it was just in a menu yes it would be but for those parts i can understand why they just changed it like that way it yeah. probably was the simpler way for to do it for that but changing a brand the new game, game. Menu of a 25 year old yeah, but, game might be a little bit difficult <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah so but, but when it comes to a brand new game like this you should have a full lock of accessibility and i'm not gonna lie final fantasy 6 or square enix you have a heck of a relationship with sony i'm sure you could have spoken to them and say hey you do phenomenal accessibility can we hey, maybe work something out where you got your yeah, fuckers you're getting final fantasy 16 exclusively on your platform how about you help us out a little bit and give us some exclusive give us a little hand with some exclusive ex accessibility issues for the get for our game and everything you can't you tell me you haven't had that conversation. You're going to be born by them soon, eventually, I bet. So, for God's sakes. <laughs> you fucking How about Square Enix, you lazy fucks? So, I'm on Laura Kate Dale. This is where I initially saw the news story. I'm on Laura Kate Dale's Twitter. <clears throat> and there's been, another, there's been another update about it. So, I'm just going to read the screenshot that she's posted on Twitter. <clears throat> so, I don't know what news site she's gotten this from. But it's basically what it says is only two of these five accessories can be equipped at any time. When asked why all five cannot be equipped simultaneously, producer Naoki Yoshida said, quote, if you put all of them on, then basically the player doesn't have to do anything anymore. And so even with the two strongest ones, like the Ring of Timely Evasion and Timely Strikes, when you get it down there, even then you still have to push square and you still have to get out of the way of some things. Even with those two powerful accessories on, you're still actually a part of the action, In quote. So I think there's a, fundament, a fundamental misunderstanding here where I don't think he thinks these are accessibility options at all. They are. That's literally what they're used for in other games of accessibility. Um, <laughs> we don't want the game to play itself. <clears throat> It doesn't sound like you want disabled people to be able to play the game either, <laughs> Yoshida. I'm just throwing that out there. It's a shame. 
because like it's a, shame. a lot of people are going to be excited about Final Fantasy 16 and this is a big AAA game from a big AAA studio that has the resources to create easily create accessibility options for their video game that they've been making for 10 years yeah um it's probably not been 10 years i don't know and the fact that it's not gonna the fact that it's not gonna happen or it's gonna happen in this really shitty way just sucks for the people that would need these options to be able to play the game it does it sucks it sucks massively and uh, just to show us just again that the, the studios are still lacking behind in getting on board accessibility <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So we'll just keep talking about it and <clears throat> we will keep banging the drum. Do you have any drums? We need I keep saying we keep banging the drum, but I don't have any drums. Do you have any drums? No. Shit. Um we'll keep banging our desks. We got desks. There you go. <laughs> um Yeah. I don't know, man. Final th- between this and the and the whole, hey, we're not gonna have black people in our game or people of color in our game because we want to be historically accurate. I'm starting to just, I'm starting to just feel like I'm getting, I'm getting to the point where I'm annoyed enough that I'm like, you know, I might just skip this. <laughs> like, I might just skip this. I don't know. It's just pissing me off. Like more every time I read a new comment about a new thing, or it's just like, for fuck's sake, man. <laughs> I get it. There are plenty of other games to play. I can just play one of those. We'll see. We'll see. I probably won't. Anyway. Plenty of time. I only want to do one of these stories. <laughs> I don't want to do one Then of don't. Them. You know what? These are here, right? These are here for you to pick from. If you just said you don't want to do one, don't do one. I don't mind. Sorry. Uh, VR. So this isn't a new story. This is actually so there was a there was a, a discussion on Eurogamer with the tight with this title, which is is VR gaming destined to remain niche? I thought you were getting like you were just gonna go ha ha pull out like a fucking my PlayStation VR headset. VR headset. Fuck you. But <laughs> so no, I think it's an interesting question, right? Because like PSVR two is is just released and the Meta Quest two is arguably as popular as any VR headset has been. So like this is like, but this is like the second generation of VR at this point because we had a, an, an original generation when the original PSVR came out and Five came out and the original Quest, um, Oculus Rift came out, um, and now we're here again. We've got a new headset, and I just thought it would be an interesting thing for to have a little discussion about: is VR always going to be a niche thing? Gaming thing. Uh, He's leaned forward. For the forward. time being, <laughs> I am leaning forward. For the time being, yes. Um, when it comes to like to the games and everything, does this never enough support for them or anything for it? Now I know PlayStation have said they are putting a lot of. Putting, going to be putting in a lot of support for their new VR headset that that's just come out and everything, and I look forward to hearing the game. Hopefully, the amazing games that's going to come out for it. But true, um, it's it's a, sadly it's just not enough out there for people to be able to want to do it, to be able to do it. Yeah, uh, for this type of thing. Um, if it were outside of the gaming verse, no. Yeah, I think a I mean... lot of different studio, a lot, a lot of different companies could really use this. I think hospital, the hospitals could use this uh, in a very useful way for themselves, for training, the heck, for even for training. Um, it could do a lot of things to really help a lot of people, or mm-hmm. a lot of other companies to be able to do things like, say, say you're a person, like a house for a house, you want to buy a house, you're moving abroad, you can't come and see the house. Uh, but if you have a VR headset, you might be able to do that type of Shit. thing. And they could do that. And I, when I was at college, I was researching into VR headsets for one of my courses. <coughs> uh, humble brag. <coughs> I got a distinction on. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think you'll find that I'm a bit of a VR expert. <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't say that, but uh, I think I did a good argument. I must have done a good uh, argument. Awesome. So, <laughs> I mean, I've been, but, um, so I've been playing VR since... I've been playing VR since it's po- since it was possible to play VR in this country. 
Yeah. Like, I mean, EGX, the first year they had Oculus Rift set up down there, and the first thing I, me and Rush did was we went to play War Thunder because they didn't have that many games um, set up. And it was interesting to sit in the cockpit of a World War II fighter in VR. That was the first thing I ever did in VR. And literally, like, we, everybody... So everybody was supposed to be, like, doing... War Thunder's, like, a, a, a was an arena, like, dogfighting thing. So you're supposed to fly around planes and shoot each other. And literally nobody was doing that. Everybody was literally just flying in planes being like, Wow, fucking hell, look at this, man. <laughs> this is fucking amazing. Oh, shit, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, shit, I just crashed. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like, so, like, I've been around for a while. I've played Alien Isolation in VR. Now, that was memorable. Because I'm fucking I stupid. I am fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that horror game, put it in VR, and then every time... I've played so many horror games in VR, like, but every time, right, you put the headset on, right, and then the game starts, and you immediately go, this was a mistake, I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> 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 oh, no. <laughs> look away. I can't look away. It's everywhere. But I think it is always going to be a niche thing in, in gaming. I don't think it's ever going to be a, a mainstream thing. I think, number one, price is just always going to be a factor. I think VR headsets are very technologically complex to the point that they're always going to be very expensive and aside from the quest 2 which has its own limitations of like how powerful it is you need powerful hardware to tie the headset to right it's you don't just buy a psvr 2 you also need a ps5 you know if you want to yeah. buy a headset more powerful than the quest you need a pc and you need a beefy pc and that's going to cost you money as well like you can't play half-life alex on a quest it needs the the PC hardware to be able to play. So I think it's always going to be niche because it's always going to be an, ex an incredibly expensive peripheral. And I don't think there's ever going to be a killer app for it because I think if there was going to be a killer app that was really going to push people to buy VR headsets, it would have been Half-Life Alex. Because that game was amazing. Everybody who played it, myself included, thinks it's incredible. Like it's an incredible game, but it's also an incredible showcase of the technology. And it blew up among people who own VR headsets that could play it, but it didn't really blow up beyond that. I don't think the they sold a lot it. of headsets off the back of it. That's the thing about that. That makes me go. Th that that makes me argue against that. Is Half Life the thing for it? Because I think Half Life's been gone out of people's minds for a long, 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 long time now. I know everyone jokes us again, Half-Life 3 is going to get revealed at E3 this year all the yeah, time. But it was always the joke type of thing. You set but aside, me, if, you, now... if you set aside the Half-Life name, like, it was an incredible game. Like, I didn't, I've never met yeah. anyone who has said anything less. Who's played it? Oh, I don't disagree with you. I haven't touched it. I can't comment on it. Like, I'm only speaking of what... I'm only going to like speak Resident of, like, Resident Evil, I <laughs> And even that yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't move the needle. Yeah. And maybe it'll move like, the needle this time. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe like Resident Evil will, it will get bundles with PSVR 2 and 6 million people will buy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But That's I doubt all it. we need to see is people bloody getting intentionally killed by Big Mama. <laughs> if that doesn't move PSVR 2. <laughs> Look, man, stick the headset on, go to Castle Dimitrescu and have fun. <laughs> I mean, Take hey, me no. And it's not, when I say that, though, it's not an indictment. Yeah, it's not an indictment of VR as technology. I fucking love it. I think it's amazing. Star Trek Bridge Crew and Resident Evil Seven are two of my like most fond, fondest like experiences of gaming. And I guess the fifteen minutes I spent playing Alien Isolation, but I was still traumatized. <laughs> Understandable. So, yeah. All good. The people who have got their headset now, all their, their parents are going to be here, all they hear is, HARDER! HARDER! <laughs> me, like, mommy. what the fuck? <laughs> You're not <laughs> wrong. It's weird. I think, I'm not wrong, I know I am. I think, part of, I think part of what makes me think that is, like, PSVR 2 is just launched. And so PlayStation are currently in the, in the, in the place of, hey, we should, you know, make people aware of this in the games that are coming out on it. We just had a state of play last week and they showed five VR games um, at the top of that of that state of play. One of them was Before Your Eyes, which it, that's a great idea. 
If you don't know what that game is, it's a little indie game where you where I played it on PC before it was a VR game where you controlled it by blinking. Like you watched memories from a character's life, and every time you blinked, you moved away. And I, I did a review of it a couple of years ago uh, with Moody, and I fucking I think it's an exceptional experience that'll be amazing in VR. The other four games were shooters. They were all shooters, and like. <laughs> They look good. I'm not. I'm not going to talk shit on on the games that I saw. They all look good, but they're all shooters. Like, is this the yeah. best we can do? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, is this the best we can do with this awesome, cool new technology? Is shooters? Yes. <laughs> and that that to Why me not? because that's that that's that that is the genre that sells the most. But sadly, yeah, no the shooter it, games, and it is yeah, but. Not like so. No one's going to buy Call of Duty in, in V. No one's going to buy a VR headset, to play Call of Duty in VR if they can play it normally. Like we nailed shooting, and shooting in VR is fucking incredible. Don't get me wrong. I played Farpoint, one of the most aggressively average video games I've ever played in my life. But I was playing it in VR with the with the controller with the aim controller, so it felt incredible to play. <laughs> Like, incredibly average game, amazing in VR, but it's just like, to break out of that, it would be like if all games had been Mario. <laughs> like, would what gaming if, have what got... What if all games were Mario? Would gaming have become as popular as it would, as it did? And I don't think so. Like, if all games were the same game, and I just feel like... But the problem, but the problem there is, it's like the more you experiment in VR, the less people are going to play it, and it becomes this weird thing where it's just eating itself. And that's why the I biggest, think it's going to be niche. The biggest hurdle they have right now is pricing. The price for the PSVR is just too expensive. When you get, when you can get an uh, an Oculus Quest Two mm-hmm. for under like three hundred quid, and it's fucking amazing. It is. Um, there's a, that is a massive problem. There's no doubt about that. Like so, here, so if you're gonna put things out like that, expensive and everything, I'll be very interested to see how many units they've sold by the end of the year. Uh, and if they don't say anything at all, that gives us a teller. I think basically. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, they're very good at telling you the numbers when they want yeah. when the numbers are good, yeah. and very good at telling you not telling you when the numbers are bad. The thing, the que- the, the problem, the Quest Two specifically has is again, it's that thing of like not all VR games will work on the Quest Two. You can't play a Phasmophobia on on a Quest Two unless you connect it to your computer. You can't play Half Life yeah. Alex on it. You can't play Star Trek Bridge Crew on it. And and that's the problem where it comes there, where it's like, okay, it is revolutionary and it is amazing to play a VR headset with no wires. <laughs> Dangerous, yeah. but amazing. And like, what's the solution? There's got to be a middle ground between power, price, and I was trying to think of a third P word to describe wireless. Wireless. <laughs> like. Like uh, I could say the thing of just like oh everyone's waiting for for, uh, for the Oasis from Ready Player One type of thing. I could just say that, and it because it like just because of like it's how... called Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're waiting for Fortnite to go on it. Put Fortnite on it. Let's see how long. Let's see how fast they'll go off the shelves. Just put it on every single VR headset and see how it fucking goes. Then we'll have an outliner. And then we'll just be like, it's not the games, it's fucking Fortnite, guys. <laughs> it's not the VR headset, it's fucking Fortnite. Of course the Smegheads were going to fucking buy a headset for it. <laughs> you know, and it's just one of those things. Like, uh, for, like for me, yeah, they're, 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 it's very niche right now. Could it change? Yes. But will it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm very much in the ballpark of probably the same as you right now. There's no doubt about that. Like... Like, no one can afford them yep. to, the, to the extent of what they are right now. Yeah. No one can. Like, if you're lucky at work in a PlayStation, you would have been given one by the team. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> Why did I change jobs? <laughs> um, um, and you could have, and we could have just been absolutely fine and everything, but no, sadly, we're not. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
one thing this conversation has reminded me that we definitely need to do is we need to get your Oculus Quest a cable to connect it to your computer. I need to buy. I need to find I my. I need to find my VR headset, and we need to play Star Trek. <laughs> oh, no. It's so good. Bye. It's so good. Yeah, man, I said transfer all the power to shields. No, um, you said weapons, Moody. <laughs> shields. <laughs> I said transfer all the power to shields. Moody, I'm driving. I'm not the engineer, okay? <laughs> <laughs> when you're an only that's, fucker, yeah, that's, that's not my job. The captain tells you. <laughs> How about you do your good fucking cap and do some fucking work for once? <laughs> yeah. Do you think Cisco would have said, <laughs> yeah, and then I said, boom. Oh, no. Wow. Well. That would have been said. You think Cisco would have done any of this? <laughs> he would have stood there with his arm, one arm behind his back, like he doesn't do it, get into flying through the shit with, with the battles, and just stand there going, I'm awesome. <laughs> he is awesome. He is smegging awesome, no doubt about it. I'm three, two thirds of the way through season three, Deep Space Nine. Respect. Bash Bashir doesn't annoy me anymore. Yay. It's a dub. It was it was a triple threat. One, you start seeing him become friends with O'Brien. Two, you do that whole past tense thing where he's the guy wandering around going, "This is fucking bullshit," and "This is bullshit," and "This is bullshit," <laughs> and then three. And you're like, "Why is the person I don't like is saying the yeah. right things right now?" <laughs> yeah. And then and then the third one is he basically tells Kaiwin to go fuck herself, and I was like. <laughs> We we like Bashir now. <laughs> in the most in the most nicest way ever. <laughs> yeah. Without actually Without swearing. getting fired. <laughs> like he takes he it to the line where he would get fired, stops there, but <laughs> He basically does a spock in uh, the, the the first the 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 JJ Abrams film. Live long and prosper. The, I was gonna say it's the only time I've ever, I've ever felt like live long and prosper was a threat. <laughs> yeah. When I watched that movie. Live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, ooh, I felt that. Yeah. It's like, ooh, I'm a little bit afraid and a little <laughs> bit turned on. <laughs> oh, no. It's like, what's these feelings right now? I'm both scared and horny at the same time. What the hell's going on? <laughs> what am I playing? Resident <laughs> Evil Village? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that tells me everything. Yeah, she walks up to you. Live long and prosper. Oh, mama, see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stream Resident Evil 8 in VR, and then it's just like, I'll not have the face cam on. And it's just like, I'll collapse. Like, the, the, the character will just collapse, and it's just like, wait, did she get killed? Like, no, she's still alive. <laughs> she keeps replaying the same thing over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time for the last part of the podcast. First, we've got games out next week. Cool games out next week, because I've started calling it in the time stamps, because we don't do every game, we just do ones that look cool next week. There's a game coming out that I think looks pretty cool. It's called Romansylvania. <laughs> it was a really good segue from what we were just talking about. It's coming out on March 7th, PS5, Xbox Series, SNX, and PC. And it's a... Uh, it's a side-scrolling action game. Why is, why why is the why is the document making me add? Mo no, okay, there we go. Um, combined with like a story-driven romance game, it looks incredibly weird. So you knew I was going to be into it. <laughs> incredibly weird game. Amy's top game of the year. <laughs> Most anticipated. <laughs> I want to argue against that, but Immortality was my game of the year last year, so I can only concede the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. glad I didn't vote for that game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great game. You should try playing it for longer than one minute. <laughs> Felt like 30 minutes for that. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I looked at my when I looked at the stat on, on my phone on the Xbox app after you were like, oh, I played it for a bit. And I was like, one minute. <laughs> <laughs> it <literally> felt like 30 <laughs> um, so yeah Romansylvania looks cool I, I shall hopefully be checking that out at some point I've got Octopath 2 right now so like I'm going to tell you about these cool games that are coming out but they're going straight on the backlog then I probably won't be playing many of them <laughs> so the 2023 backlog already bloody hell Huge. oh yeah of course I have I spent like I spent the first I spent the first month of the year playing old games that got re-released. 
Their fault. <laughs> I've, got their fucking, fault I've got fucking Metroid Prime coming tomorrow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so we'll move on. It's time for Open Critic Ed Ed. This is the game we play every week where we try to guess the Open Critic average of one upcoming game or more. Whoever guesses closest to the score gets a point. If you manage to guess the score correctly, you get two points. Last week, we tried to guess the Open Critic average of Wolong Fallen Dynasty, the upcoming Three, three Kingdoms RPG from Team Ninja and Koei Tecmo. I guessed it would get an 81. Moody guessed it would get an 83. <coughs> For the longest time, <laughs> I mean, he was getting points out of this one. But at the time of recording, Warlong Fallen Dynasty has an open critic average of 82, which means we have the first draw of 2023 and 2022. <laughs> we have the first draw since 2021. <laughs> Did we not draw in 2022? No. Really? Yes. Okay, that's fascinating. I know, right? <clears throat> for the whole of 2022. We drew once, <clears throat> but that was on purpose when we both picked the same score for Choo Choo Charles. <laughs> what are you going to yeah, do? It doesn't, doesn't that doesn't count. doesn't count, right? <laughs> like, we did it on purpose. doesn't count. Um, yeah, so that keeps the scores at Amy 4, Moody 4, and now we have a draw on the board. Um, and I know what you're going to say when it goes back up again tomorrow. Oh, damn, I wish I could have gotten it now. Like, well, Octopath Traveler 2 went down to my score from last week. <laughs> I know, I saw, I saw that. that. I saw I was like, that, God yeah. it. <laughs> That's just the fickle nature of open critic head-to-head. Fickle and nature of fucking critics. <laughs> fickle nature of game critics. <laughs> fucking useless twats. <laughs> Bastards. Um, we're not going to do it all 10 out of 10. There would be easier scoring them. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, according to IGN, all you have to all you have to answer the question of is is the game fun? So I don't know why these reviews are so long. <laughs> is it fun? Seems like a binary yes no question. But what do I know? This week we're not doing I guess because there's not that much coming out. Few indie games. We're gonna bank it and save it for later. Sweetness. <clears throat> do you want to do a fantasy critic check in, or do you want to just leave it for next week? David, I'm tired. I want to go to bed. I knew you were going to say that. That's why I asked. Because, mm-hmm. you see, now I can just go, yeah, cool. He said, he said no. So, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. The first half of the podcast is Amy's domain. The second half of the podcast is Moody's domain. <laughs> Moody calls the shots. And the reason it's set up like that is because Moody's always tired. So, when Moody calls the shots, we get through the podcast faster. <laughs> But you always know st- I don't have to. And now, now I don't know. I can just not actually talk about a topic. I'm going to skip all of them next week. <laughs> yeah, if you start abusing that power, I'm going to take it back. <laughs> but I know why you didn't want to talk about that news story. I didn't want to talk about that news story. I just put it in there I was because very surprised it was you put story. it. In, yeah, it's kind of I was funny. Very surprised you put it in. It's kind of funny. It blew up in their face. It was rather spectacularly. So, it, I, but I think the fallout from that news story is going to be the more interesting thing. Yeah, we'll see. We'll get lots of juicy uh, we, I might talk in. about it. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. Let's <laughs> make the main story like I did <laughs> last week. Then. And then you can't fucking avoid it. <laughs> um, I'll just sit there and not say anything. I'll that's going to do weird. it for episode 341 <laughs> of the Words About Games podcast. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Happy Star Trek Day. I'm going to go watch Star Trek in two hours and. 41 minutes. It's going to be great. I sit there and refresh at midnight till it comes up. Do you have any final thoughts, Mooney? <laughs> it's clo- it is the weekend, ladies and gentlemen, and non binary people. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Stay safe. Be awesome. And remember, remember, always say fuck you, Tories. <laughs> <laughs> if we both do it at the same time, we can make it the thumbnail. <laughs> Actually, given that the title of the top podcast is going to be something about Suicide Squad, that would be even funnier if we're both like...